Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a Guild of Ravnica draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I want to wish all of you a happy 2021, and also remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback. I do read all of the comments, uh, even if it does sometimes take me a little while to respond. Also, uh, click that bell so you get notified when I post future videos. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's dive on in. If you want to catch me streaming live, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. And one thing that I will say about this set is this is a set that is from like 2018 or something like that. So many of you may may not have drafted it. And there are just a couple of things I want to get out of the way. First, uh, Ravnica, Guild of Ravnica is a guild set, which means there are five two color combinations that you are going to be drafting. That is blue, red, blue, black, uh, black, green, green, white, and white red so i think that's all that i think i didn't skip any of them or say any of them twice but since there's only five color combinations you draft the set a little bit differently so the there aren't really support for the other archetypes so that means that instead of 10 archetypes there's only five and when there's only five archetypes it means you can more aggressively take gold cards so something like a sky knight legionnaire is something that you can actually take early because if you are in a situ if you are like drafting you have like instead of it being like one in ten chance of you being in red white it's like a one in five chance of you being red white and so you can end up in the archetypes a lot more uh the best two archetypes tended to be demir uh and boros uh from arena uh is it definitely had some good potential as well we're just gonna be starting with the planeswalker because it's a pretty good planeswalker and uh yeah, pretty good. I just wanted to get these format essentials out of the way. But uh, Demir was a really good control deck. Boris was a really good aggro deck. One of the things with uh, is it was that it could sometimes be aggressive and sometimes be controlling, which meant that there were times where you ended up in situations that were uh, less favorable. Uh, the green color combinations are a little bit weaker overall, just because green's commons aren't as strong. Uh, the fact that there's a lot of death touch in black does impact that as well. One of the best ways to draft this set from my experience was to, for the first five picks, just kind of ignore what you have in your draft pile and just take the best card in the pack. Doesn't matter if it's a gold card, doesn't matter what color it is. And then after like five picks in, see what you have, see what looks open, because finding the open guild is more important than sticking to like one card, like a RAL or something like that. Because as I said, there's only five color combinations, and so if you are going to be, uh, I think I'm just going to take dead weight here because it's the best card, uh, super key for the black decks against uh, aggro. Direct current is also pretty solid. This one's a little bit finicky. But as I was saying, if there is, uh, since there are only five color combinations, finding the open one is really important because if you are getting cut off, the p p people passing to you are not going to be giving you a lot of good options. You're just going to be getting hammered uh, in the card department. Okay, so now we have Deadweight, we have Ral. Sometimes you can play like a Grixis control deck, like a blue-black deck splashing Ral would not be that far amiss or out of my range. Okay. So, in this pack, again, we're just looking for the best card. Healer's Hawk is much better than it looks. Uh, this is a was a kind of an early sleeper in the format, but it gets much better because of the uh, Mentor mechanic that lets you put counters on it, on creatures that have lower power. So this card's pretty solid. Uh... Passwall Adept was strangely annoying. Uh, Dowser of Lights was pretty good just because 5 toughness was really hard to remove. Um, Centipede is decent. Flower Flourish is actually pretty strong as a card, but green-white isn't really where you want to end up, so you kind of bias away from it a little. Crawl Swarm is just 1 toughness, not where you want to be. I think the pick here is between Passwall Adept and Healer's Hawk. I honestly think Healer's Hawk is probably the best card in this pack. And Passwall Adept is not something I'm going to worry about, so we're just going to take the Healer's Hawk. And I'm not worried about it at all. Like, we have three different colors in our three different picks, and we are still feeling just fine. Okay, so now we have a little bit more optionality here. The most flexible card would be Wojek Bodyguard. It's a great synergy piece with Healer's Hawk because of the Mentor mechanic and the fact that Healer's Hawk having Evasion in Flying means that it can actually attack because it can't attack or block alone. Uh, there's also a Dead Weight in the pack, but I think Dead Weight is worse than Beacon Bolt. If you are in an Izzet deck that is building around... Uh, things like Beacon Bolt, then it can be very powerful, and it can move us back towards our RAL. Hypothesis is also quite good. This is one of the reasons 5 Toughness is good, though, because sometimes you just can't get deal with 5 Toughness. Uh, there are some nice Boros cards. Wojek Bodyguard is great in Boros. Vidalcan Mesmerist, if you get multiples of these in play, it can actually be devastating for your opponents. I think Hypothesis might even be better than Beacon Bolt sometimes. Beacon Bolt's really good, though, if you build around it, so I think we're just going to take that. Okay, and clearly people are getting the anti-green vibe because this card is a complete beating. 
probably just going to take this. Uh, if they're... If we're getting this card fifth pick, then maybe we're going to get a lot of really good green cards moving forward because this card is fantastic. Just plus nine, plus nine, or spread out. Uh, Luminous Bonds is okay. There's a red-blue land here. Again, for the first five picks or so, you don't really want to like think too much about color requirements because it's really important to find uh, the open colors. Even if green isn't ideal, getting cards like this means that over the next couple packs, if this is get, coming to me fifth pick, it means that I'm going to be getting really good cards uh, in future packs as well. Demir ability is Surveil. Luminous Bonds also in the pack, so maybe Selesnya is open. Yeah, Angaran, it was pretty crazy if you could get enough Mesmeris. There's also an Izzet Guildgate, but I'm just going to keep taking the best cards in the pack. There was also like six green cards in that pack. Okay, and now there is Status Statue, a really good green-black card. And it looks like we're starting to find our lane. There's also a Rose Main Centaur, so it's looking like uh, we're going to be playing green-black or green-white. We could also be Is it? but again, we're not super worried here. Um, but yeah, Status Statue is just the best card here. Uh, Rose Main Centaur is pretty decent if you can facilitate it. Again, that's another reason Healer's Hawk is good, because it's a cheap creature that can be like a mana dork for this sort of thing. Demir Informant, Fresh Faced Recruiter are also solid, but we're just going to keep taking the best cards. And now, again, we're kind of towing the line here between Izzet and Golgari, which don't have any overlap, but still seeing cards like this is nice. There's also a lot of blue cards in this pack. Vigor Spore Worm is okay, but I, I'm very okay just towing the line here. We're basically choosing between two different color combinations and is it is much better than Golgari so I'm happy to try and stay open to is it with hypothesis um uh, mesmerist is a card that I probably rate higher than other people so I because just of how hard it is to block if you get multiples Demir informant is okay but not always great I'm just gonna take the hypothesis over the worm I never was a fan of stray because a one two is just not a real body a lot of the time okay and now there's a pass while adept. I never was a fan of sworn companions. I don't love the snare. There are some white cards, but I'm happier playing the blue the blue card if I can. Okay. Well, wheeling this might change my mind. If we're wheeling Golgari Fine Broker. And we do have one, two, three reasonable Golgari cards. And there's another card else that we can take. We'll just take this. So we're playing either Is it or Golgari. Maybe Charnel Troll is where we want to be. <laughs> this is wild. Just wheeling all the Golgari cards. It looks like people are going a little too extreme on their not play Golgari quest. No, we're going to play Golgari or Is it? I think Wario Copy is actually better than the Dowser of Lights here just because we already have a little bit more expensive cards and getting the Wario Copy. One of the things that Golgari really cares about is getting creatures in the graveyard and Wario Copy overperformed in that metric because it had Vigilance. That being said, we could probably get one later, but yeah, I'll take the Dowser. Dowser's just a better card. We can probably get Wario Copies a little bit later. Sure, we'll take the 10th Disregard just in case we end up transitioning. I don't love the Lockets. And now Crawl Forge is nice. Vigorous Spore Worm was actually a Good performer a lot of the time. Porkless Vine wasn't a card I loved, but Forager's having one copy is real nice. One of the problems is... Some, I'm just going to take this so I don't send people the wrong message about green. Yep, last big Golgari card. So it looks like we're going to be playing Golgari. Uh, I'm not as opposed to it as others might be. So I know that some people might have latched on to this Ral, but what you have to realize is that if I'm wheeling Golgari Fine Broker, sure, Golgari might be a worse color combination, but I wheeled Golgari Fine Broker. I got a Charnel Troll, which is a pretty reasonable card a lot of the time. I got this one super late as well, and if I'm getting those cards super late, then it means that I'm going to be getting higher card quality to make up for Golgari being a little bit worse. Uh, Midnight Reaper's a very solid card, uh, rewards me for playing a creature heavy deck. Price of Fame's also just fantastic, uh, removal spell that also surveils, so I'm actually uncertain on which one I want there. I already have one removal spell in the statue, Dowser of Lights is a top end card. It looks like I'm playing Golgari, so we're going to get rid of these blue red cards. We did, we did get a couple of them, but I'm more than happy to just play Golgari here. And I think we're just going to take the Midnight Reaper. It's such a difficult effect. It's a two for one or even more. Price of Fame is a great removal spell that fits my themes, but I'm just going to get more premium creatures if I can. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and now there is Burglar Rat. Burglar Rat's not a card that I love. I think it's better than Generous Stray, though. Um, two drop, you can jump it into the graveyard to get more stuff going. Uh, Lotleth Giant, just too expensive for what it does. One of the pr problems is that Black Green doesn't have great ways to get things into the graveyard a lot of the time. But I think blue, black, green was so open that I'm just going to commit to it. I already have a couple of key gold cards, and I think I'm just going to... I have, like, just super high card quality across the board here. Yeah, Rat does have synergy with the Reaper. Okay. Here's one of the Death Touch creatures I was mentioning. Wario Copy is probably going to wheel, which I'm pretty happy about. Because I do want to get creatures into the graveyard, and Wario Copy, it does trade a lot. The Okran Assassin is pretty good in a lot of situations. It works really well with Bounty of Might or other combat tricks that I might get. So pretty happy getting this. It might wheel, but then again, all the other cards I want in this pack are gonna wheel, which is namely the Wario copy. Getting a Demir Guildgate to potentially splash blue is something that's a possibility, but there's not a ton of blue cards that I would splash. It'd be way more likely if I was like a deck that potentially was like, I guess, blue, black, splashing green for something, I don't know. There's not a ton of splashing because you can just get all the good cards you need. I'm just gonna take the gold card. Um. This card is fantastic, by the way. This card is one of the best in the set. Um, just really a beating. <sighs> We're not going to be able to splash it. Um, I think the person passing to us was playing blue because we're seeing a lot of good blue this pack and we didn't see any good blue pack one. Like we saw a good blue red card, but we didn't see any good blue individual cards. So this type of pattern would make sense. So probably just going to either take packs favor because it is a good combo with assassin or just a Child of Night. I don't love Child of Night, but it can get the job done sometimes. I don't love the Grappling Sundew either. Hello, Antonio. Let's just take the card, I guess. And now just get another two drop. Again, cheap creatures are fine. They This works well with the Assassin. Getting multiple power on the Assassin just make, helps it turn into a board wipe more easily. And I don't mind things that are gonna trade off early. Happy to get another status statue. Again, I don't think anyone else is going to be in our colors. Because everyone hates Golgari. Like the plague. Glaive of the Guild Pact is sometimes actually like really good. I don't have any gates right now. But if I pick up the Glaive here over a Crawl Forgers. Which Crawl Forgers is solid, but I can probably get one later. Glaive can be a really good card in my deck. If I just have a bunch of random Burglar Rats and Child of Knights. I can just pick up some random gates that are like half of my color. And then use them to um, my advantage. There was a thing where like rats and cats because Burglar Rat and Generous Stray hold the glaive really well. So we'll take this as a speculative pick. It's better than it looks a lot of the time. And here we see there is a Pitiless Gorgon. Death Touch is one of the like good things that Black Green does. I do already have a couple of these, but I like creatures. It's guaranteed to trade off, which is good. And just having a high creature count is necessary. I don't really want to take an off-color guild gate over just a decent three drop for my deck. And now I will take Iron Shell Beetle. Never happened, isn't that great? Exactly, decklist. That was what I was hoping to show off, so I'm really glad it worked out. Wand of Vertebrae is actually kind of interesting. Um, because milling a card actually really benefits my Charnel Troll, my Golgari Fine Broker a little bit, but I don't think I really want this though, still. We'll just get a nice two drop. Generous Stray, or I could just take a Guild Gate. Again, I'm really not a fan of Generous Stray. It's fine as like a roadblock that you can jump with to get like some extra creatures in the graveyard, but I have much better three drops, and I don't think I need Pax Favor, so I'm just gonna take the Guild Gate in case I do want to go for that Glaive plan. And the Okapi came back. I don't love the Mood Mark Painter. I don't love Never Happened. I just want creatures. I got a pack saver anyway. I don't mind playing this. It's actually really good with the Okapi, and I got the four just back. Nice. It's actually really good with Okapi because uh, the Vigilance can still pay for Convoke. One of the things about this set also is you know what matchups you're going to face because there's not as many matchups. So you know that you're either going to play the Mirror Match, Selesnya, Is It, or Demir. Typically, Selesnya sucks against Demir because Disinformation Campaign is just unbeatable for Selesnya pretty much. Yeah, last pick, Crawl Forge. It's a decent card. Okie doke. Let's see what we're working with here. Um, Rise on Lurch is one of those cards that if you can facilitate it, can do really good things. But it's pretty hard to facilitate a lot of the time, so you don't have to take them super early. 
Uh, we don't really have any self mill. I'm really look would like to get that two mana three one glow spore shaman. Uh, surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, or gain control of a creature. Stealing a creature that has low power is still really good. Uh, and we could maybe get a Demir Guildgate to splash this. There's also Swarm Guild Mage, which I think is going to wheel. So I'm just going to take this because it's very powerful. I like just Connive is just a decent card when things like Sky Knight Legionnaire are running around. There's a lot of relatively small creatures, and just being able to take something is quite nice. And this card's going to wheel almost assuredly, because if it doesn't wheel, what has everyone been doing? Again, another interesting pick. Assure Assemble is not really a card that I'm looking to play here. Uh, making three two twos isn't really what I want to see spending six mana on. Uh, Deadly Visit is quite nice. Affectionate Indrik can do really nice things. I think these are actually kind of close, because destroying a creature and surveilling is nice as well. I think the Indrik might even wheel, which is kind of wild, but I don't know if anyone else is playing green, given that I'm just seeing all these green cards. Uh, that's not a huge factor. I kind of just want an unconditional removal spell, and Indrik is a little bit more expensive. So I think I'm just going to take Deadly Visit. I do like Indrik. But, hmm. Yeah, my, my, my gut is telling me to take the Deadly Visit. I just need more. I can get a couple more expensive cards later, but... Indrix can be quite nice. And now I'm just going to take another Selesnya Guildgate, I think. I have a lot of playables, and I might be able to get this Glaive in if I keep taking these off-color lands. I wish this was a Demir Guildgate, but such is life. I might just not be able to play the Concoct part. Four mana to steal a small creature or medium creature with utility is decent. Yeah, I don't think Indrix is going to wheel, but I still think I care about having Desley visit. Five mana removal spell is going to be nice to have. And also I really like the Surveil, too. I don't have any unconditional removal right now. Actually, I do. I have two of these. But yeah, I have pretty good removal spot packages, I think. Happy New Year, Tanyuriel. And now we get a Golgari Guildgate. Severed Strands is actually decent. Um, this is a card that's better than it looks. You can just sacrifice a random Burglar Rat. Uh, sometimes you sacrifice something under a Luminous Bonds. DV's cover-up is also better than it looks as well. I'm just going to take the gate, though. You'd love to see it. Hmm. Demir wouldn't... I Based on pack one, Demir would not have been decent. We didn't see any good Demir cards pack one. Now we're seeing Watchers in the Mist randomly pack five, pick five, which is bizarre, but... Rhizome Lurch, how many creatures do we have? We need a lot of creatures for Rhizome Lurch. We do not want to really play Rhizome Lurch, I don't think. Uh, I think we're just going to take the Guild Gate here. Again. With four Guild Gates being able to play... Uh, the glaive is getting more realistic. And we don't really need more random dor dorky creatures. Okay. Prey Upon is okay. We have some 4-4s, four which are rel relatively bulky. So I guess we'll take it. Hmm. Another 2-drop is nice. I like just getting another curve. We have 4 2-drops. Child of Night's not great, though. But putting a counter on it's pretty decent. And just having two drops to trade is nice. And we already have three Crawl Foragers. Vigor Spore Worms are one that I'm pretty happy to get a copy of. Nice top end card. We already have one Dowser of Lights. Bunch of these. We don't need more Beetles. We could take the Guild Gate and then the, the Glaive is starting to look real appealing. I guess I'll just do that. Yeah, Swarm Guild Mage Wield, not surprised. Someone else took Rhizone Lurcher, though. That's bizarre. Yay, I figured we'd get one of these back. Put a counter on a creature for two mana. Could still be okay, but I want having I like having a Vigor Spore Worm. Crawl Foragers, number four. I don't mind Severed Strands. If I'm playing four Selesnya Guild Gates. Rosemain Centaur could be okay. Eh, I don't think I really care. Ooh, the, the stray. Rats and cats. Let's go. Okay. It's looking like we are going to be playing this glaive because we did get four off-color gates, and that's a decent it's a decent threat if we want it. Severed strands can be okay. We have some deck building to do here. The third pack wasn't as good as I was hoping. 
Um, I'm not sure if the um, deadly visit pick was correct. That was the one pick that I was unsure on, because Indrik, when it kills something, is really good. So now we have five gates, which is going to be like a third of our mana base almost. Uh, probably not even worth it. We have a lot enough powerful stuff that we don't need to hurt our mana doing that. It was worth speculating a little bit though, I'd say. So let's just add the land. So we have 17. Okay, and then we'll figure out what we want to cut. We don't need three of these. This is a four drop essentially. So we have three five drops. I think Dowser's worth playing. Vigor Spore is nice. Knife is also a four drop in our deck because we can't play the blue. Hmm. Yeah, it's per gate. I know it's per gate. But if if we assume we're in the mid game, and so I've drawn like through half of my deck, I'm gonna have like two gates in play because I have like a third of my mana base. Uh, so if I have like two gates in play, plus two, plus O, oh, and Vigilance and Menace isn't that good for that cost. Which means I also want to cut Generous Stray. I'm tempted to cut Burglar Rat. Um, I could cut a land. I don't have ways to use excess mana very well. I don't have any card draw. I only have a couple six drops. Prey Upon's probably not necessary. I have enough good removal that I don't need bad removal. And it is going to be a while till I have a creature bigger than their stuff. Charnel Troll does help with that though. Um, and then I could cut a beetle. One, two. I like the Child of Night because they have to trade with it, but I don't need that many two drops. This could be decent. I like this configuration decently. I have good curve. I have good removal. I've got some nice options. I've got the assassin plus beetle option or assassin plus posting, pumping with the guild mage after combat or just using status to get plus one plus one. So this should be a pretty good deck. I'll be interested to see how it does and I'll catch you all in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and special thanks to those who support me at the credits level. It's thanks to patrons that I am able to continue investing the time and effort needed to produce high quality videos on a consistent basis, so thank you so much for that, and I really do appreciate it. If you would like to learn more about the Patreon, the rewards you can get for becoming a patron, and how it helps me continue to make videos, be sure to check out that information at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. But without further ado, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one on the play with nine sources of green in our deck. I'm tempted to keep this hand. We just need to hit a green source by turn. We like we have three draw steps at it before it really matters. We don't need this until a little bit later. Wowza. So it looks like we're playing against Demir. Demir was the only deck that really played this. Yep, Demir. This isn't a great matchup because we don't have any card advantage built into our deck, really. Yeah, Child of Night's not great. We're going to lose this game. Demir is, like, not a very fun matchup to play against. They just have pretty much all the control tools they need to beat my deck. I think my deck is probably best against a aggro deck, though. I'm just... If I never draw a forest, I'm just screwed no matter what. Um, Not attacking... I don't think people really play monocolor decks either. Thanks, Moldy Bread and Sheep of Pain for the follows. I appreciate that. Demir is really hard to beat a lot of the time. Good Boros decks are really good too. Okay, opponent, read it and weep. 
Probably going to take the Find Broker if I had to guess. Even though it's the hardest to cast, it is a advantage engine, which Goldgar which Demir doesn't want to face. wild. If you look at a board like this, it's easy to see why Dowser of Lights is really quite good. Hmm. I was going to be pretty happy to trade with this, but then putting a counter on that's a little bit bad for me. We are screwed. If we had drawn a forest, we're not going to play a land because they could play disinformation campaign and we can't play anything with this anyway, so might as well hold it. If they play Watcher, we're just dead. Notion Rain, also probably dead. Our deck might not be ideal for the, uh, like, based on, like, what would we be doing in a dream world? But I also think that it's almost guaranteed the best deck we could have had in our seat because it was just so open. Pack one, pick one was Ral, is it Viceroy? So we started off with an is it card. Then towed the line a bit. Playing this so that we can then put a counter on it, take some things out. Hmm, that happens. We're certainly still in the game. We could just draw a couple of four fours or four fives and be right back in it. They did like sever the barrier of bones is not a great card. Kept it on top. Charnel Trolls can be a real beating. It's got two turns of fuel, but if they don't trade with the Child of Night, if they trade with the Child of Night, it could have a little bit more. It can always discard a Wario copy or something. Yeah, that's bad. I guess I can just sacrifice it. They should have let me exile a card first. Oh, that's a problem. Oh, I still have to exile the cards. Well, I'm screwed.
We'll hit them for two a turn. I guess we could have put the counter on Child of Night so it could attack and trade with a pass while adept. So maybe I did botch it. I don't know though. I am certainly happy to make that trade if it happens. I gain some life, I get rid of their card that's being a problem for me. Hey, Quantum Network. Look at Connive Concoct just being a legend. I don't think that was a good attack, unless they have something. Wow, they made that trade. Well. If I draw a forest here, nope, useless. Who's laughing now, opponent? No, don't kill it. Do they have a bounce spell? That would suck. Yeah, my deck's pretty good. Let's see what we're working with here. Well, we'll keep that on top. Dow's is just a massive body on this board. Like, what are they going to do about it? And I'm finally almost at the point where I can get rid of this charnel troll so my graveyard synergies will come back online. Gosh. Never mind. Charnel troll does have this problem where it just wrecks you. It's not even old format, it's just like the way it lines up. Like. There's formats that were before and after Guilds of Ravnica where it, four mana four, five mana four five wasn't good. I don't really want that. Yeah, I don't really want that. Capture Sphere is about the worst answer for Charnel Troll from from my side of the battlefield. Oh no, do they have a counter? That'd suck. Don't do it, opponent. Don't do me like that. Yay! <laughs> That's funny, Scotty. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh at your misfortune. The way you phrased it was funny. end my life. What to do? I drew this so awkwardly. It was like, I finally got to play this only after I had gotten rid of all of my creatures with this guy. That was so unfortunate. I also had no guarantee of drawing the forest, so I couldn't like jump with iron shell in preparation for that or something. Well, this is bad. And I still have more to give to the charnel troll. 
just hell. I was gonna try and gain a life there, but... Yeah, I'm probably keeping most creatures anyway. Wrecked by my charnel troll. If I had five creatures in my graveyard, this would have gained me five, and uh, I would have hadn't been able to get something, but I think I played it. I had to play it at the time. I think I'll go chump kill. Oh gosh. Goodness. I can't. It doesn't let you. It says, exile a card. If you do, you do the counter. Otherwise, sacrifice. You have to do the exiling. It's a bummer. Finally, it's dead. I'm just dead to them having a surveil card. Obviously not where you want to be. Well, we're going to lose to Silent Dart after all that. That's kind of disappointing. Gotta be said that was a bit of a letdown. This is how I would have blocked the turn before I would have blocked there and then I killed the centipede. No, I would have killed this and then the centipede wouldn't have had anything to do. Wow. Maybe I wasn't supposed to put the counter on the Night Veil Sprite. If I'd put the counter on the Child of Night, I could have gained one more life at some point. That was a tough game, but I think that counter was probably the swing factor. Better hand, we have both our colors, so we're going to keep this. Yeah, I remember it being okay to play. Oh, hey, Gandalf Grobert. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. It's not... I don't generally stream for super long at a time, so I generally stream, like, one draft video's worth. Um, most of my stream stuff does make it to YouTube, but I do some editing, of course. Okie doke. So we're against blue-white, which... It's funny because I actually did a cool video on how to draft a blue-white deck that used a bunch of Mesmerists because nobody took Mesmerists and then you could like buff them up and stuff. But this should be relatively straightforward. Pretty fine trading. And then we can just have more synergy as the game goes on. We're going to actually take two from this and then we're going to statue what they play, whatever their biggest card is by their end step. because we don't really care about a 2-2. Two -two. We care much more about a random flyer. We don't have any reach creatures, so killing that's way more important. And we gain a life. Thanks for the follow, MTG noob. Night Vale Sprite. Maybe our deck doesn't need Severed Strands. Thanks, Brote. Hmm, Kidoke. Just tapping out for our threats. I always forget that this gives vigilance. And by always forget, I mean I never knew that in the first place. Actually, I've probably used that to my advantage sometimes. I have one rat. I also have Vigorous Boar Worm, which is okay getting sacrificed to the cause. Wow. Um, they almost definitely have a combat trick here. 
plus two plus two and gain a life for every attacking creature. Why didn't they attack with the Guardian then? Yeah. Yeah. Figured. But I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. I'm not gonna get around it. I will get back the Vigor Spore Worm, because it is really hard for them to interact with that. What was that walking? Normal walking. What are you talking about? That was not normal walking. I have no idea what that was. It has. If they trade this for their flyer, I'm pretty happy with that. Next time I can play this, start attacking with Vigor Spore. I do not do well against flyers with this deck. I do have a lot of removal spells, but... Yikes. Well then, them jumping there could actually be the key to victory for me, because if I give all my stuff menace, this is 6, 9, 6, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, we're so close. We're like inches away. Yeah, we're, we're one off in terms of life points if we gain two. Plus one plus zone oh menace. So they would just double block the fine broker. I think I have to do that. Then I draw a card off the Midnight Reaper, hope it's a removal spell to kill the Sphinx. Yep, they double block. The problem is I'm still just like completely screwed to them just attacking all now. And I'm dead anyway. Gosh, that was a bummer. The way that lined up, just... I used my removal spell to kill one of their flyers and they had a way better one. They can't double block it, it has to be single blocked. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Oh, that was a bummer. Oh, another yikes situation. See you in the next round, folks. Welcome to the ra third round. Let's get a win here. This is a good hand. We're going to make it be able to hit our two drop for the first time. And we can play Okapi. Okapi dies to um, di direct current, but so does Pedalus Gorgon. They both get trapped forever in the Eternity Realm. Oh my gosh. The field. Okapi didn't lead to more damage. That's wild. We can connive it. Oh my gosh, they're playing four colors. This is a wild brew. Oh my gosh, come on land, thank you. That was really funny. That's gotta be one of the best things to take with uh, Kanaev Concoct. The gate deck wasn't really a thing until, Gil until Ravnica Allegiance. Because there just weren't really payoffs for the gates deck. I mean, there's the Glaive and there is um, like a card draw thing for gates.
Yeah, gate deck in this format's not great. Oh, ho the erratic Cyclops becomes a five-powered creature. <laughs> uh, we'll ditch the crawl. We already have a crawl, but getting another removal spell is nice, especially because it makes this thing big. Yeah, they're just so dead. <laughs> We just dumpstered them. That's how it goes sometimes, though. Well, I've seen this story before. Just two drop, three drop, steal their guy. Yeah, three mana blue enchantment. So we're against Boros, so we have a pretty good hand for Boros. Stealing something like a Sky, Cle Sky Knight Legionnaire would be real good. Wow, they are a slow Boros deck. Guild Summit, that's the card who took leave void. I never played Reclamation. I was a anti-Reclamation individual. Oh my gosh. Let's play the Midnight Reaper ASAP. Man, the status part of this is going to be brutal for them. I don't think I really want to use my premium removal spell to kill a 1-3, though. Oh, Rampaging Monument. Well, I'm glad we saved statue. Keeping it on top, okay. What would I rather take? Probably the sprite. Do I want to kill this? Probably. I think I'm just going to kill this now. Because then I can hit them for six. Nice. We get to draw our card. I wonder if they'll hold this back for double blocking. That's exactly what you like to see. The card selection from this is nice, and I'm worse against Flyers. The pass wallet up taking it would have given me an extra 2 damage this turn. Wow. I hate enchantment removal so much. And I get to filter through my deck with this, which is nice. Ooh, that could be real good. Oh, we get back Midnight Reaper. We certainly attack first, though. Look at this Night Veil Sprite carrying our team on its shoulders. They're also playing a wacky deck. Centaur, Peacemaker, okay. Okay. 
I guess what I could have done is I could have like... Oh man, I got wrecked by this card so many times when I played this set. Uh, I could have uh, like killed the Luminous Bonds and then used the Wario copy. Oh gosh, we battlefield, you graveyard. I don't have anything in the graveyard. I'm gonna ditch it. I guess if I knew they were gonna blow out lock like that, that would've been okay. This worked out though. Wow, we got rid of a four mana two three. Oh yes, we got him. We're in it to win it. I'm gonna cut a land. I think. I think with the best of one hand smoother, I can afford to run one fewer because my deck's pretty cheap. I'll see you folks in the next round. Welcome to another round. We'll keep this. Look at this go. Thanks for the follow, Fletcher. Hmm. Bounty's so good. And we're playing in the Golgari Mirror. Okrin can be good. This is going to be a good card, I think. Honestly, Child of Night seems like the worst. Take that, opponent. What? No! This card sucks! I think my deck is probably going to crush Golgari a lot of the time. Get him. I'm okay trading these off. Thank you so much, Brotkan Mare, for the subscription. Six months. That's wild. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Welcome to back to the formation. Bounty might could do some messed up stuff. Oh my gosh, this is exactly what we've been hoping for. Oh my gosh. Bounty of Might plus Okran Assassin, or Pax Favor plus Okran Assassin. So good. Oh, sweet. Oh my gosh, and they have to kill the Okran Assassin that we just stole from them. This is nine damage. They're almost like dead, like two turns away from death. This is where a gate comes in handy. Um, let's get back our assassin. Oh, they're blue splash. Speak of the devil. They have one green mana, which means they can't cast anything. So we'll just go for lethal here. So three plus three six nine. I believe that kills them. Whoo! We're on a we're on a spree of victories. And I'll see you folks in the next round. Welcome to another round. We're gonna keep this on the draw. Two drop into three drop. And this card can do some serious work. Ooh, Selesnia. Wow, that's such a good card to have here. We probably don't want to trade because of the Midnight Reaper. Even though this trade is normally great for us. Thanks, Antonio. 
it's hard when you're working on picks with pixels it's like really tricky to know oh beautiful I like to consider myself a jack of all trades when it comes to Microsoft Paint. <laughs> when it comes to the computer, you know, I can do Microsoft Paint. I'm a. Uh, Okrin Assassin's gonna be good here, too. Well, this card's a problem. One of the best of the cycle. I'm gonna just play this because I'm not gonna be attacking. I'm just gonna be blocking this, probably. And then jamming a crawl forward just to block the 2 twos. Ah. Uh, Pain. I wanted the extra cards. Hmm. I'm gonna block like this. Having creatures in the graveyard means I'll gain extra life from this guy, which is nice. This card plus this could win me the game. I'm worried about another fight spell. Okay, well that thing's gonna have to die. So they don't have a land, so they have three spells in hand. Bounty of Might plus Okrin Assassin will win me the game if I set it up. And this has Vigilance, so it has to block it. So playing this is so tempting. I'm just going to play this and get back... this Gorgon? No, Child of Night. Because I'm going to be playing... This life gain could be really good with Bounty of Might as well. I only need this two card combo, so I don't need to get like a Death Touch creature or anything. I need to play around Pax Favor and plus two plus two. This is an easy double block here. This thing could be really good for me. I might even just be able to kill them because this is 3, 7, I mean 3, 5, 9, 18. I have lethal. If they had no cards in hand, it would make this a lot easier. Because there is a card called Punishing Strike that does two to a creature, so if they'd use that on Okran Assassin, and I blew my bounty of my... It would cost me big time. No blocks. Okay. My turn. Well, we have to do something with Bounty of Might this turn, I think. We can just one-sided Wrath them. Let's just attack with all and see what happens. They have to block everything on the assassin. Five five, the five five, all the two twos, sure. There's four, seven, eight, nine, so then I can buff up everything plus three plus three. So what punishes this? Is there an instance be life gain? No. There is a 
deals too that could kill Child of Night, but they would have used that on the Assassin. You know, I was going to lose if they had the deal two thing, so... I probably should have split it up anyway. But if they had... Yeah, I don't think they had anything, or they would have just killed the assassin before I could attack, like, deal things. Whew! Got the win. See you folks in the next round. Another round. We've had some real good hands here. Thanks, Boab and Adkala for the follows. Okay, we've got Guild Mage. We'll probably just get him rolling. Ah, oh, the Hasta Marshal. Wow. Connive has just been dis devastating just every round. Is there a GRN draft guide? That was before I was making draft guides, but there is a GRN, uh, like, guild by guild guide that I made. Where I, I did, like, a video on how to draft each guild. Or maybe I only did two of the guilds. I, did, I definitely did Boros and Demir. Well, that could be a real good for me to steal. Could be real good to steal. So could that. Which one would I rather have? Um, probably this one, because it's better for them, because making 1-1s one -one is tough for me to beat. Though I could just kill it, and Inspiring Unicorn's attack trigger is pretty nice. Yeah, I think I could just kill that thing with Severed Strands. Uh, no, I'm not playing the Selesnya Guild Gates. Because this turn, look at how big my attack is. I just attacked them for like nine. Oh, they're playing a Guild Gates deck, though. Easy attack all here. And then just play my biggest guy, the Dowser. I will have to kill this before they get into the range of making two of them a turn. But that's a little ways off. Crushing canopy? No! It can't destroy artifacts! Ah! Oh, why? Oh, well, that worked out. <laughs> I was just saying it can't destroy artifacts, but you can destroy enchantments, you know? Look at that. The poise, the precision. I can just attack with everything again. Look at me go. Broken wings greater than crushing canopy. Wow. Yeah, it's a and it's a musical reference. Every time someone in the chat, and I'm pretty sure it's Sujav, says, take these broken wings and learn to fly. Just every time. Thanks for the follow, uh, Sword6752. Why not give the team Menace? Because that costs five mana. And, uh... I did something else, right? I crushing canopy so I could attack and give plus one, plus one. We're coming in hot. They did do a good job with the 2020 draft sets. I was pretty happy with them all. I got a lot. I think Ikoria was my favorite one of them. Ah! They're alive! Not for long, though. Look at this. 4-5 beater. Just a beast. 
They should just triple block the Dowser of Lights here. And go to one. Da 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 Zendikar was pretty good. Uh, I mean, they were all pretty good. I think I'd probably go Ikoria first. I know nobody asked me to power rank them, but I probably liked Ikoria. Then Zendikar, then Theros, then the core set. Theros had some cool stuff in it. I don't know. Oh my gosh, just... Uh, it's overkill! I could have just activated from Menace and won that way, but Bounty of Might's also impossible to lose with. Wow. Can you imagine getting this card fifth pick? Because that's what happened to us. Just wild. We're up to five wins! See you folks in the next round. Come to another round. We're going to mulligan this one because we lack black mana. And we only have two lands, and it's just a rough hand. This hand is interesting. Um, we're going to keep it. And we're going to get rid of Dowser because we don't have the lands. And this card could really carry us to victory if we uh, get there. Draw a couple creatures. Oh my gosh. They could mill one of my creatures. Well, I'm going to discard the Wario copy. Oh, that's perfect. Them milling me helps me so much. Wow, radical idea, nice. This is where we show off our gambler's nature. Because if they play a creature, we have two turns of Charnel Troll, and we can separate strand something, and just start smacking them. Play a creature, buddy. Oh no. But then again, we can also just lose horribly with this strategy, so. We did not draw a creature, and they did not play a creature, so we are in trouble. Yikes. The fact that they have Whisper Agent is so sad. So much disappointment. I have to destroy a creature and opponent controls. I could statue my own rat. And then I just have to draw a creature. I hope they kill the charnel troll. Well, Charnel Troll, you tried. I'm not going to do anything wild. This was a rough hand. If we hadn't had to mulligan this hand, we would have been really good because we would have had an extra creature to discard. Huh. Now it's tempting. Now I'm just going to do it because it's such a sick win if it works. Hmm. Status statue the rat. We're doing it. Let's go. We're just putting everything into the charnel troll bucket. Just never lucky in a million years. Doesn't it suck to suck? Isn't that the saying? Just can never catch a break. My deck has 17 creatures in it. Feels bad, man. Ugh. Oh my gosh! Come on! Yes! Opponent, what are you doing? You're saving me! Lex, you beautiful, beautiful beast! Oh, we're alive!
Oh my gosh! Vicious rumors! Wow, and then I'm not gonna- and then I'm gonna somehow lose this. Oh no. Oh my gosh, that was wild. Oh my gosh! Opponent! Well, I hate this card more than anything else. Oh my goodness. Whew. Wowza. Just an absolute wowza moment here. Gosh. Whew. I hate disinformation campaign. It's my least favorite design of all time, I think. Uh, I hate play playing with it feels wrong. Playing against it feels wrong. It's overall just very unfun as a card. Ah. Oh. This is up there as well. Look at him go. Well. I guess we could have tried to kill this information campaign. Not a huge deal. We're just gonna lose to a Night Veil Predator. I'm gonna ditch the assassin. I just want to draw a land so I can win with Bounty of Might, maybe. So we have to go... Destroy this. I guess we didn't have to destroy this. Oh, well, I screwed that up. Well, we never had a chance then, because they were just going to counter this, I think. Maybe not. Maybe they weren't going to counter that. But they would have countered the Bounty of Might. Such a shame that uh, Disinformation Campaign is a card. Really hate that card. So much. It's not even that it's good. It's that it's, like, good in an unfun way, too. It's just, like, you can play this without having any Surveil Synergies in your deck. And then when you do play it and it goes off, it just like ruins the game for your opponent. And it's not, it's like a, it's like a one card eight rack game or something. Yeah, I wasn't going to win this game. Oh man, we almost got there with the Charnel Troll. We had that wild moment. If we hadn't had to mulligan, I think we could have won this game. Um, I don't know, kind of a weird game, but such is the way it goes. <sighs> this card's also just stupid as well. Nightfall Predator, it's up there with this information campaign. It's just game, they're just not very fun. Like when you're playing with them, you feel like, oh yeah, I can't possibly lose because this is just like not a fair card. And then you look at the cards that like, like this is the gold card for, like the gold uncommon for Demir, and then the gold uncommon for Golgari and Selesnia and like, even just like, I guess there's guild mages. So like, if you look at it, like we have Okran Assassin as ours. Is in my graveyard. Is like the golden common for Golgari, which granted can be very good, but you don't just play it and ruin the game for your opponent. They can just interact with it. But yeah, Whew. I think we lost two of the games that we had to Mulligan. So there's kind of a trend there. That's why uh, Mulliganing isn't great. I mean, all of the double colored gold cards are pretty good though. Like Fine Broker is great. That um, Crackling Drake is good. Um, what are the other ones? There's the Conclave guy that they played, the Celestia person played against us. But they're not, like, feels bad. It's like, I would be okay. Like, if, if the if disinformation campaign had been blue, blue, black, black, then I think it would have been totally a cool card. But the fact that it's so cheap is just, yikes. I, like, I wish that the, go I wish the disinformation campaign was, like, this, their card in the cycle instead of them getting Night Veil Predator, which just isn't very, like, the fact that it has Death Touch, too, is just, like, ugh, kind of a yikes. I know I kind of turned into complaining, but this was a really fun draft overall. We had some crazy moments. The uh, 
the when they like vicious whispered us or whatever and milled another creature for our charnel troll was absolutely wild and primal might was just an absolute all-star so don't pass this card fifth pick folks if you did watch this on youtube and made it all the way to the end of the video in the comment section down below leave hashtag zero to hero because we not only had a zero two into a five three run but we also had a bunch of creatures that were really small like okran assassin or iron shell beetles turn into massive 11 powered creatures thanks to bounty of might so uh hashtag zero to hero to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video remember to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel leave a comment in the comment section down below you can check out more of my content and my patreon and the discord server to talk about all things magic and my articles and all that good stuff in the description and pinned comment uh so there'll be links to that but yeah overall a real fun format i hope you learned a lot uh the drafting portion in particular can be really tricky for this format uh because it's just such a different vibe when there's only five archetypes instead of ten so i really hope you learned something there that is going to do it for this draft video though i hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you next time